All right, so we are here one more time with Stan Yan. We actually talked to you a little over a year ago at Fort Collins Comic Con, right. and so we uh, figure we say hi and, and, and get a little bit of uh, talking time with you. Um, so, like I was telling you just a minute ago, we, we're doing more about Starfest. So how okay. long have you been coming to Starfest as a as a uh, artist? Um, I think this will be like it hasn't been consistent, but uh, on and off for ten years in some way, shape, or form. So uh, when I originally started here, this this actually was the first local convention that I did uh, zombie characters at uh, profitably. Nice. And so, um, and I was only here for two days. I was sharing a, a booth in the Starfest dealers room, which I, I was kind of honestly surprised at how well they did, not realizing that Horror Fest was a part <laughs> of Starfest. So there was definitely like a rabid fan base that was was ready for you know what I had to offer. And then um, and then I think the next year or the year after that was the first year that Comic Fest started. And so I wanted to make sure to support all of the local you know comic conventions that I could. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so I did that one for a couple of years before Horror Fest got their own dealer's room and then I started exhibiting there because at that time Comic Fest was in a totally separate building yeah. which was tough because then you were forcing people to cross the road to right. get to it. Um, and Horror Fest was in the same, it was in the Marriott and right. so it was just a walk down the hallway. You know? yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so did you come at all as a uh, fan as a as a nerd or anything before you started coming as a dealer presenter artist um just once actually and that really? was back in 1989 wow. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was uh when i was in college um, and the first i'd heard of it actually was in 1987 when a bunch of my high school friends went to it and wow so I was, that was the first I was even aware of Starfest or Starcon at that time because they had a, a fall science, I don't know if they were like sister cons or something like that, but uh, yeah, the fall one I think was Starcon and the spring one was Starfest, Starfest. yeah. Um, ah, editing is a beautiful thing because I just lost that question. Oh, How yeah, how has it changed? <laughs> so as you've as you've been coming here since basically uh -huh. the '80s, how have you noticed? Like, obviously we've had a change in venue once or twice, right, right. Um, but how have you noticed like the growth and then the fandoms and and the type of people even that come through here? Well, I, to be honest with you, I think Starfest has kind of spearheaded the homogenization of local fan conventions where. They're trying to be all inclusive because originally, back in the day, it was you're not only just strictly a, a science fiction fan convention, but it was really centered around Star Trek more than anything right. else, you know. And uh, so now, you know, obviously we've got Horror Fest, we've got Comic Fest, and you know, you don't just have people dressed in, uh, you know, uh, Star Trek outfits uh, or dressed as Klingons. You know, people are dressed in, you know, Harry Potter. You right. know, you've got uh, Star Wars out uh, there. You know, kid uh, dressed as Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> I don't know if you saw him <laughs> or, yesterday. Or the guy dressed as Sting that's walking around. Like oh, I didn't WCW see him. WCW fandom <laughs> even. Um, so. Uh, we like I said, we did talk in Fort Collins. Uh, your that book has since come out. The Vincent yep. Price book has since come out. Uh, you were, yeah, go definitely grab one. Go. Awesome. So yeah, the book is the book has come out now. I, this is, I mean, not to say you're the only comic book artist who's doing Kickstarters, but this is the only one that I've personally heard of because uh -huh. you're such an independent artist. So like. You also started another Kickstarter as this one was ending. Right. Kind of let us know about the your your new book and uh, the issues that you were telling me about yesterday. Yeah. With so so uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know I I've, I researched uh, Kickstarter quite a bit and I participated in some campaigns uh, as an artist, but not you know the person that launched it. I funded a few or you know contributed money to other campaigns just to kind of learn about the process and uh, you know some of the things that people said is you know you don't want to uh, launch a campaign or more than one campaign a year 
and I violated that. <laughs> uh, they also, you know, mentioned that you don't want to launch a campaign close to the end of the year before you can incur some deductible expenses to offset your taxable income, and I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then the other thing that I feel like wasn't my fault was I, I had a lot of production issues with this book because, um, first of all, a lot of my backers were really unresponsive and I, I think a part of it is just I didn't realize how much Kickstarter notifications and emails probably got sent to people's spam folders so they just ah. never saw them and so people that were backing me that were expecting to get drawn in the book they, they hadn't sent me any photo references for me to draw them into the book and this was like going into August you wow. know and I'm like badgering people and badgering people and then and trying to reach people in different ways and then finally I got to the point of you know having an ultimatum like if I don't hear from you I'm gonna draw someone else in your place so one of the one of my bigger backers actually never got Got back to me, oh, wow. I had to draw Lucille Ball in his place in in the book, <laughs> and then um, more celebrity. Yeah, and then on top of that, so I, I get all the files to the printer in August, and don't hear from them for several weeks. I'm like, did you get my files? And they're like, oh my gosh, you know. And I, I'm telling people that because I, I I like you know I got a month for the printer to get me this book. Right. I should have it at Mile High Horror Film Festival at the beginning of October. So. Right. I started telling my backers that you know if you pick up your you, you can pick up your books at Mile High Horror Film Festival, which didn't end up being the case because the printer, first of all, you know after that they, they had to put a rush on it and they were going to overnight me books, and then they contacted me and said that their printer had broke down and so only 25 books got printed. So I'm like, oh, just send me what you got then, you know. And I've been promoting to other people that this book will debut here so you can buy a copy of it or get a zombie character and get a free copy of the book. And so, of course, all the books are gone. And then UPS had a mechanical failure. And so the books didn't show up on um, Saturday, like I told, or was it fr Friday? Yeah. Uh, well, I expected the books on Friday, told everyone to come on Saturday. People showed up on Saturday and the books weren't there because of UPS. And, and then so I got the books on Saturday, so then, you know, then I had my 25 books on Sunday, which kind of was a good thing because a lot of the people that showed up that were trying to pick up their rewards couldn't come back on Sunday. And then, of course, the rest of them went to people I was drawing zombie characters of that day. And then, and then they just kept sending me like 50 books, 75 books. And to date, of the 2,000 book order I placed, they've only sent me 500 books. And so, yeah, there's there's legal issues going on right now. And I actually got permission from um, Blue Water, which turned to Stormfront, which turned to Storm Comics, so that sure. they wouldn't be affiliated with white supremacist groups. Right. Um, to allow me to use a local printer here to go ahead and print another run. So I've got a thousand uh, books coming from Avanti Printing, which did my prints for, um, for the celebrity zombies that appear on the back of the book. And then uh, I have that Joker. It's fantastic. Oh, great! And then um, uh, and I, I either the quality of their printing is just excellent. Awesome. So, um, but you know, lo and behold, I, I put an order in with them, and then they sent me another 250 books, <laughs> which is good because I have them for this. Right. So, so this is like sliding into November, and, and I lo I launched this Kickstarter on Halloween yeah, weekend. The new book. And so I feel awful because I'm launching a Kickstarter and hitting up people that back this Kickstarter <laughs> that I haven't gotten their books to yet. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is just bad form. I know it already. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that I lost a few backers just because of that. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, I didn't have a lot of control. And I wanted to get this out before the end of the year because my goal was to have this book for this whole convention season. And I'm just missing this one, but the printer that's printing this book uh, tells me that uh, based on their production, they'll have this book shipped to me on the 14th of this month. Awesome. So this book should debut at AnomalyCon, which I'm gonna be at in two weeks. Awesome. So. 
very cool. <laughs> so at this convention, I'm just pre-selling the books, and people can get like a whole set of these uh, artist cards signed by me if they pre-order the books here. Cool. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to click subscribe, check out anything else I've posted, and remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.